Hey everyone. This time we read the Dragon Quest book by Austin King. So this is a lot better than the last Dragon Quest book I read. Uh, so I won't be getting all angry and, and mad and swearing at the camera or anything like that. There is a lot that I like about this book. There are some things where I, I still kind of got a little upset with, but I was mostly able to just kind of laugh them off because the, the book had a lot more charm in it and just there was a lot more in there that I really liked. So the book's basically in two parts. There are the interviews and sort of the personal stories for other people and that's at the end of the book. And then the first part of the book, that's all about Austin. It's about him discovering Dragon Quest his memories, some of the challenges he had while he was playing through dra the Dragon Quest games, and also his like year project of trying to play all of the mainline Dragon Quest games. So the book starts off with Austin's story, and I liked this part, but I didn't like it as much as the second half of the book. It does a lot to kind of tell you who Austin is, tell you his history with Dragon Quest, and where he's gone in the fandom. He started up his own podcast from doing this whole uh, year-long project that he did after he you know, kind of rediscovered the series and really started getting into it and playing a lot of the games. Throughout his section, he gives us a lot of his reflections and a lot of his both problems and things that he likes about playing the different games, especially in the mainline series. What I like about it is that he doesn't just stick to the mainline series, he kind of splits off and plays a few of the side games or the spin-off games from Dragon Quest. And I didn't know about all of them, I knew about a few of them, but there were way more than I had even thought could have been in the Dragon Quest series. So one thing that Austin does that I don't think he really needed to do I understand why he did it, but I don't think he really needed to do it, is when he gets to one of the games that he doesn't necessarily like in the series, he feels the need to kind of apologize to people who do think that that game is their favorite or is the best in the series. I don't think that was really needed. I mean, I felt like Austin could have just put, hey, I didn't like it, here's why. That being said, he does talk about his struggles in a way that I kind of like, and these are mostly struggles with the different games, like when he comes to one that he doesn't particularly like. The one that kind of sticks out for me is when he played, I believe it was Dragon Quest VII, and he had to really like step away from the game and just kind of come back to it with a fresh, like a fresh uh, perspective on the game. So when we get into the second section, I kind of noticed this weird pattern that was going on. When he talks about the people that he's interviewed, they really kind of came in like two real sets for me. I don't know if this is true for everyone that played Dragon Quest, I'm only going off of what Austin had in his book, but it seemed like there were two stories that, you know, really people had when they discovered Dragon Quest. There are some changes to the individual stories, but for the most part it was people discovered it through the Nintendo Power giveaway, or they discovered it when uh, Dragon Quest VIII on the PlayStation 2 came out. And I thought that was really interesting. I didn't really read a lot of the stories where it was, I picked up with the fourth game, or I picked up with, you know, seven, or something along those lines. When you do get a story that does do that, where they picked up with something that kind of goes outside of those two that I mentioned. Um, it's like I saw it, but I really wasn't interested, and then when I s came to another game in the series, then I kind of got into it, but they would be introduced to a game, wouldn't really like it, and then came back in one of those two like more popular eras. That was just what I kind of noticed from reading through the interviews. Um, I'm not saying that that's like a gospel thing, I'm just saying that's what I noticed when I was reading through Austin's book. And really these stories make up like probably a little bit more than half of the book, which is absolutely great. I loved it because I get to read about really a lot of passionate people finding a game and finding a series that they like and just you can really kind of read how they felt and some of them the games have had a really positive impact on their lives. It's really a bunch of 
awesome stories, and I'm really glad that Austin put them in here. It adds a lot to the book from kind of somebody coming at this from my perspective, where they want to hear like more of the personal stories about people playing the games, and they don't necessarily care about hear, about reading somebody else's accounts of the game, because I want to go and play these myself, but I want to hear about people's reactions to playing them, and that's what you get a lot of in this book. Last thing that I'll mention here is the talk about how the Dragon Quest fan base is small but very, very loyal to the games. And I think he does a pretty good job mentioning it's small outside of Japan, because in Japan the games were incredibly popular and even outsold uh, Final Fantasy for a very long time. This is where I think more speculation on really why it wasn't as popular in the US could have been added in. Frankly, I would say they didn't stick with it. Enix just didn't release the games that they probably should have. They, they most likely should have released 5 and 6, especially as uh, RPGs on the Super Nintendo were really picking up. And that is one thing that's mentioned in this book that I forgot to put in my script here. Uh, the Dragon Quest series stayed really consistent for the mainline series, with the exception of 10. And that was after they merged with Square Enix. And I don't know why Square Enix decides to do this for some godforsaken reason, but they have just decided they're going to throw like an MMO into the mainline series, which I don't understand why they do that. They did it with Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV, and then they did it with Dragon Quest X. It seems weird and seems kind of odd, but, you know, hey... They're a multi-million dollar company, and I'm some jackass sitting in a chair talking into a camera. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up. This is a really good book. I really enjoyed reading it, and I would definitely recommend you guys pick this up. Even if you're not a fan of Dragon Quest, this is a really good read, and hey, it might get you into the series in some way. So anyway, if you have any comments, if you liked the video or hated it, please let me know in the comment section below, and have a great day.